Thank you. And here we have the speakers. Okay. Wow, there's a lot of people here. That's brilliant. <laughs> okay. Hello, Margaret. It's good to see so many of you here today. So many people I know from our town. And um, we're here today to call for a ceasefire. To demand a ceasefire and to let the country know that there are people in Margate who stand with Palestine in this time. The last six weeks have been horrific. The level of brutality and disregard for human life has been so shocking. And the complicity of our government and the media in supporting what Israel is doing is felt like a betrayal. A betrayal which undermines the concepts of decency and fairness that all of us need to believe exist in our society. I personally, I felt voiceless for so many weeks here. I felt very alone and helpless, like I couldn't really do anything about it. And I'm sure there were plenty of people here today who felt the same. And that's why it's important that we're here today, to show solidarity. To show solidarity with the people of Palestine and to show solidarity with the suffering that's going on in Palestine but also to show solidarity with each other and particularly to those amongst us who are directly affected by this Palestinians and Arabic people from that area whose families are directly affected I believe that we have to take responsibility for our part in what's happening and find the courage to speak out against the genocide being perpetrated in front of our eyes. To speak out against the silencing of our voices which is taking place at every level all across the country. We can make a difference. We're making a difference by being here today. And I want to illustrate that point by telling you about something very small that happened to me a few weeks ago. It was a little thing, a tiny thing, but something that made all the difference. We hung the Palestinian flag from the front of our house four or five weeks ago. And obviously, as a family, we felt a bit exposed. We didn't know how the people on our street were going to react. And so we hung it out the window and an hour later I came out of my front door and there was a lady across the street and she said to me, is that your house? And I said, yeah, quite defensively because I didn't know whether it was going to be a good thing or a bad thing. And she came over to me she might be here today, I don't know, and she said, thank you so much for doing that. It makes such a difference. And in that moment, she saw me, I saw her, she taught me the meaning of solidarity, what it was all about. She received what I'd done, and it completed the circle. It showed me that solidarity can bring light to dark places. That every little thing we do makes all the difference. So I would urge you all to do everything you can, however small it is. 
put something in your window, wear something, wear a badge, and start to make Margate feel like a, 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 a fair, a, a place where people can express dissent from the mainstream political view. I'd like to just give you a little shape of what we're going to do today. We're supposed to have three speakers. We've got our speakers. We've got our speakers, guys. Okay, who I'll introduce one by one. We're then going to have some poems. And then we're going to have a, two ladies are going to come who are going to sing with us. And we're going to finish with Mike Righteous, who's going to come and hopefully sing his song, Free Palestine. So first up, we've got, our first speaker is Dr. Shah Tamori, a lecturer and consultant in international law. Great speaker. Thank you. First of all, I have to say thank you so much, Margate. We didn't expect to see such big numbers when we arrived in this morning in the train. So thank you. And let's start with free, free, Palestine, free, free, Palestine, free, free, Palestine, free, free, Palestine. I talk to you here once more, and I, as my people are going under genocide. This has been undergoing for over a month now. One month and two weeks. We are talking to you after almost 15k people have died. 15,000 people. We're counting the death of over 6,000 children so far, many still of which stuck under the rubble. I spent my last week watching what could be called the War of Hospitals. What Israel specifically did is the targeting of hospitals going in to terrorize people. While Israel was really busy justifying to the world why it did that, every single one of us was online with the people inside. The accounts that we heard from inside included thousands of displaced people, women, children, and men there who are, who are wounded, whose wounds are not being treated. People who are screaming without any access to basic medication, without any anesthesia. The testimonies that we heard from inside of these hospitals included people who had to amputate small children without any access to basic needs. 39 kids were on incubators. Up until now, 10 of these kids have been killed because they didn't have access to basic needs. People in the ICU just kept on dying while they were hearing gunshots from every single place. Al Shifa Hospital became a mass grave. They had to, they had to put a hundred people in a mass grave outside of the hospital. Meanwhile, bodies and corpses, corpses are rotting inside of the hospital. The first thing that the Israeli army did when they entered is to confiscate some of these bodies. Historically speaking, Israel confiscates the bodies of Palestinians to use them as bargaining chips. This is what we had to witness last week as the world was still debating, as the UK Parliament was still debating whether or not a ceasefire is alright. It is okay for people to live under this terror. Meanwhile, they asked people in the south of Gaza to go there. We saw witness, we witnessed people having to walk for kilometers on and on to witness another act of mass displacement. Women who had to go out of the hospital with no basic necessities uh, and to cry as they left the hospital. These were the scenes that we, all of us had to spend the last week in the millions watching. These people had been displaced before. Let's all remind ourselves that 80% of the people in Gaza are already displaced. They're already refugees. And let's remind ourselves that the main reason why Gaza is 50% children is because these people were afraid of ethnic cleansing. They knew that they were being ethnically cleansed. Historically speaking, ever since 1948, that is their basic reaction to that. When you have a historical context, 
where you know that people are defending themselves against systematic racial racial prosecution against the fact that they know that the mere existence as a Palestinian will be targeted. Not only that, this week we also witnessed another escalation in the West Bank. The West Bank where presumably there is no Hamas to obliterate, but there are Palestinians, God forbid. And God forbid they are saying, no, we will not stand silent as our, as our own people get massacred on the other side. God forbid that we say no to a colonizing system. God forbid that an illegal occupation that was declared as such over and over again but with the UN, with every single international legal instrument that you could think of, and people protested against that. Now what we see is airstrikes against the West Bank. Over 2,500 Palestinians have been incarcerated, arbitrarily detained since October 7th. We have also seen footage of the torture of these people, thrown outside, tortured to, to the bone. That is the level of human suffering that we speak of. That is the level of human suffering that I have to stand and debate. There is no more debate about this. This is collective punishment. This is war crimes. This is crimes against humanity. And above all, what is currently happening within a very important context of colonization is a crime of genocide. Yesterday, UN experts came out and spoke that word. I spoke on this mic before on how I stood in front of the UN and said, <laughs> almost four weeks ago from now, we have every single evidence to say that these people will be killed, but their lives were inherently undervalued. So we stand here to say that also this country is complicit in that genocide. And then, yeah. 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 Bring she sooner. We stand as we as we saw the genocide convention being enacted. We clearly saw it. The UK has a duty to prevent genocide. The UK has a duty not to be complicit in genocide. And what did it do? It sent armed support to Israel. What did the US do? It sent armed support to Israel. It said the ethnic cleansing is okay when it happens to people who are other than us. It is not okay if it happens to a European people, but it's okay if it happens within our own interest. If it is okay if the PAA system makes money out of it. It's okay if Lockheed Martin makes money out of it. We forget that people in parliament also have an interest in that. We forget that the arms industry has a hand in that. And we forget that all of that political interest is now taking a voice that is stronger than the voice of the people. We need to remind ourselves that the people united will never be defeated. Repeat after me. The people united will never be defeated. 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 Today, we go out and say that we refuse that for this to happen in our name. So repeat after me, not in my name, 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 not in my name. We come here to say that we see this suffering that we see the Palestinian people as they suffer, that we refuse this dehumanization, that we refuse this narrative that legitimizes a colonial system to exist, that we, re that we refuse that the suffering of the people continues endlessly and the denial of the existence of the Palestinian people. So we stand here to say, Palestine, we see you. Oh, we see you. Palestine will be free from the river to the sea. Palestine.
Palestine will be free. for a ceasefire. I'm calling them forgetting that Israel is a terrorist state by itself. Forgetting that we stand among one of the biggest, most horrible criminals on earth. The intent of genocide is expressed. The act of genocide is happening. And today and always we will stand and say that this is not something that will happen on our watch. So thank you for coming. Stand strong, stand clear, refuse to be intimidated, and scream with everything that you have. Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine! Thank you for having me. Stay strong and stand in solidarity. We have a big thank you to Dr. Shah Jamori, please. Thank you guys. You know, I'm sorry. Okay. Go okay, next, uh, Hillary from the local branch of the Palestinian Solidarity Campaign is going to read uh, a statement given to us by Naomi Wimborne Idrissa from the Jewish Voice of Labour. Are you ready, Hillary? All right, so Hillary. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. So, I, I don't know how I am going to follow that, but I'm here and I've been asked to read out this statement from Naomi Wimborne Idrissi from the Jewish Voice for Labour. She's proud to have been invited to speak today. Unfortunately, she can't be here in person. And also proud to have been part of the Jewish bloc on the massive peace march in London on Armistice Day. Hundreds of us came together with people of all races and creeds 
to send love and solidarity to the people of Gaza, defying far-right threats and attempts to divide us. Okay. Lost my place now. Yes. We are all Palestinians. We are all Palestinians. We are all Palestinians. So defying far-right threats and attempts to divide us, we came together demanding an immediate ceasefire, an end to the killing, an end to the siege destroying Gaza and families' lives an end to Israel's apartheid regime between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. We congratulate those politicians who had the courage to defy their leaders in the vote for a ceasefire in Parliament last week. And to those leaders who advocate for no more than a humanitarian corridor, making them complicit in ethnic cleansing of Gaza's men, women and children, we say loud and clear, not in our name. 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 Thank you. So a big thank you to the Jewish Voice for Labour for bringing that to us today. And now we've got Naomi Evans from the local organization, Everyday Racism. Three years ago, we were here. We were gathered on these steps together, all of us from different backgrounds, culturally, ethnically, socioeconomically, to take a stand against the systemic racism that ravages this country and the rest of the world. And today we come back together as a group of people joined, united in our outrage and our disgust at the treatment and the lack of empathy and humanity and justice afforded to the Palestinian people. Last week, close to a million people took to the streets to make their stance known in London. And someone said to me, I thought about going, but then I thought, what difference will that make? What difference can I make, said seven billion people. Because the people of Palestine are not afforded the privilege of apathy. They are staring into the face of death and they are watching people debate their worth and their humanity and shame on all those MPs that put their career before their integrity and what they yeah. like. yeah. But today here in Margate, in our little seaside town, we come together to say to the people of Palestine, we see you and we will not let you be forgotten. Because while we may have a government who prioritise profit over people, a government who is more concerned with their own individualistic interests than the collective good, a government who actively seeks to dehumanise and oppress the most marginalised people in our communities, we come here today to say no. No. We refuse to live by your values. We will not stand and watch the, what the UN experts and the legal scholars are calling a genocide unfolding in real time. We will not watch that happen before our very eyes and stand by and say nothing. And we will not accept a government and an unelected prime minister that does not only watch, but worse than that, actively empowers it to take place. Because the lifeblood of racism and anti-Semitism and Islamophobia and transphobia and homophobia and all the isms is divide and rule. Divide and conquer.
And the reason is because they know full well that as a collective we are so strong and there is so much power in us coming together and they are scared yeah. of that. Yeah. We have to reject those tricks. We have to reject those strategies and work together unitedly. So we stand here today as my sister said, to demand a ceasefire. We demand an end to occupation. We say to the people of Palestine, we will not let you down. We will not be bullied into silence. We will not allow these grave injustices to be carried out in our name. And while you mourn, we mourn. And while you grieve, we grieve. And your children are our children. And I want to finish today with some words from Brother Connor West, who said this. We have somehow forgotten that a rich life consists fundamentally of serving others, trying to leave the world a little better than you found it. We need the courage to question the powers that be, the courage to be impatient with evil and patient with people, the courage to fight for social justice. In many instances, we will be stepping out onto nothing and just hoping that we land on something. But that is the struggle. To live is to wrestle with despair, yet never allow despair to have the last word. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Ceasefire now. 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 Okay, guys. Before our last speaker, I've been asked to to try to sing with you, it's called Not Staying Silent. <clears throat> so I say, these are war crimes. And you say, I'm not staying silent. So I say, these are war crimes. I'm not staying silent. Violent apartheid. I'm not staying silent. Gaza bleeds and cries. I'm not staying silent. 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 I see children dying. I'm not staying silent. Israel is lying. I'm not staying silent. The BBC is biased. I'm not staying silent. 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 Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. So our final speaker is a Palestinian activist called Samir Eskandar. Thank you, Samir. These past few weeks, we've all seen images and videos we may never be able to unsee. A few weeks ago, I watched a video of a small boy digging with his bare hands in the grey dust and rubble where his family home had stood until an Israeli airstrike obliterated it and buried his whole family. This boy was trying to uncover them frantically digging small mounds of dust in case it could reveal a hand or a foot or any other trace of what remained of his family. The 2.3 million Palestinians in Gaza are facing 
what international experts are calling genocide. The thousands of Palestinians killed, including children, are not numbers. They have names, faces, memories and dreams that won't be fulfilled. And this includes artists, poets, painters. Hiba Adunada was an award-winning feminist poet and author of a novel entitled Oxygen is Not for the Dead. And this is what Israel means when it says it's aiming for damage, not accuracy. And this is who Israel meant when it said it's fighting human animals. It means that every man, woman and child in Gaza is a target. The priority of any humanitarian right now is to stop the genocide. We need a ceasefire. We need the unimpeded access of humanitarian aid into Gaza. We need to reject ethnic cleansing. We need a military embargo. We need an international criminal court investigation and we need to end the siege of Gaza. To do this, we have to continue shifting the mainstream narrative. We have to refute the dehumanizing propaganda. Palestinians have never been so thoroughly demonized as a people in the mainstream as we are today. And this matters because once you have demonized and dehumanized an entire people, you can do what you want to them. And in this case, that means genocide. And finally, we need to push for accountability. Many artists are among those speaking out where most governments have failed. Even Hollywood figures have called for ceasefire, going against the grain of the mainstream. They said in an open letter, we stand for freedom, justice, dignity, and peace for all people. And in an atmosphere of blanket complicity in the West, these statements are significant. But we need far more. Israel's relentless bombardment of the besieged Gaza Strip has wiped out entire families with the active complicity of Western governments, including Britain. The weaponry of the fifth largest military in the world rains down sheer terror on 2.3 million Palestinians. Gaza's residents have nowhere to hide, nowhere to be safe. They are imprisoned under an illegal 16-year-long land, air, sea, blockade which hampers the necessities of life like basic medical care and sanitation. They have witnessed and experienced numerous brutal Israeli bombardments over the recent years. And Israel's system of oppression is the root cause of violence and it is this system that Palestinians are struggling to dismantle. Despite Israel's decades-long apartheid and occupation, Palestinians, despite the inhumane violence we have faced, remain defiant and steadfast in the struggle for freedom, justice and equality. In Britain, we have a profound historical, moral and ethical duty to stand in solidarity with this struggle. Palestinians are clear on what people in Britain can do to stand in meaningful solidarity. End the complicity of your government, corporations and institutions. Yeah. Yeah. We must demand that the British government stop arming Israel and instead implement an immediate military embargo to cut off the supply of weapons to the apartheid regime. We must escalate BDS campaigns against corporations and financial institutions that prop up and support Israel's regime of oppression. Like Barclays Bank, with branches on almost every British high street, who invest over £1 billion in companies supplying weapons and military technology to Israel. Or like Puma, who sponsor the Israel Football Association, lending legitimacy and support for Israel's colonization of Palestinian land. Some in Britain may ask why this is any of their business. After all, we do have enough on our plate with costs of living crises, repressive and racist government legislation and endemic police violence and impunity. But Palestinians are not asking for charity and we're not asking for British people to come and save them. Palestinians are asking British people to end links of complicity in Israel's decades old regime of oppression. To pressure your institutions to cut 
complicit ties with Israeli institutions that benefit from and whitewash apartheid. The obligation to do no harm is a profound moral obligation, no matter what your conditions are. And right now, doing nothing is harming us. During Thatcher's brutal anti-union repression, British workers intensified their solidarity with the struggle to end apartheid in South Africa. They saw the connections then between the neoliberal austerity enacted by Th Thatcher domestically and the British state's imperialist role globally. And Israel and its lobby groups play a significant role in the heightened repression of civic rights and suppression of freedom of expression in the UK and elsewhere. This creeping McCarthyism is pronounced in suppressing advocacy of Palestinian rights and we can also see it clearly in the suppressing of advocacy of black and minority rights and in rampant Islamophobia. If Israel's right-wing supporters in both main British political parties get away with suppressing speech on Palestine, no justice movement will be safe. Aside from this ethical internationalism, there is also a seriously pragmatic need to stand up to this repression for the sake of all struggles for racial, economic, gender and climate justice here and abroad. And crucially, the ethnic cleansing of Palestine since 1947 was made possible only due to British colonial rule. And the question of Palestine remains as much a domestic as an international issue in the UK today. The struggle for Palestinian liberation is fully intertwined with local struggles for justice. But we know we have a long way to go to end Britain's deep complicity in Israeli apartheid. Protests like this are a start, but they're not enough. Join the Palestine Solidarity Campaign. Get involved in local groups. Mobilize and join BDS campaigns. BDS is the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Movement, a Palestinian-led movement that pressures international corporations, institutions, artists, academics and sports players to cut links of complicity with Israel's apartheid regime. It represents an overwhelming consensus among Palestinians of support for BDS. Its aims are the end of Israel's military occupation, full equality for Palestinian citizens of Israel, and the right of return for Palestinian refugees. Yeah. 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 BDS was inspired by the South African anti-apartheid movement and by the boycotts during the US civil rights movement. It categorically rejects on principle all forms of racism and discrimination, including anti-black racism, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, sexism, homophobia and transphobia. Key parts of BDS are the academic, cultural and sports boycotts of Israel. We call for widespread boycott of apartheid Israel's complicit institutions. Today, tens of thousands of artists and academics publicly support effective measures for ethical disengagement with, from Israeli cultural and academic institutions that are complicit in whitewashing Israel's regime of oppression against indigenous Palestinians. BDS targets complicity in apartheid. It's strictly institutional. It doesn't target individuals for boycott, only institutions. And this is a key difference with the South African boycott that partly inspired BDS. We need to work together on strategic, principled and sustained campaigning. We need to intensify our peaceful calls for accountability. We need more sit-ins more BDS campaigns, more collective work to leverage real pressure to demand a ceasefire and an end to apartheid, occupation and settler colonial dispossession. Together we can make our world better, more just and more dignified. Thank you. Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Free, free! Palestine! Thank you. Thank you, Samira. Um, next, Hillary's back on, and she's going to introduce a couple of poems uh, which people are going to read. Um, and then we are going to have a silence um, for the dead in Gaza and the West Bank. Um, so here's Hillary. Thanks, guys.
Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we're going to have um, a little bit of um, reflection upon all the lives that have been lost, all the people that have been killed, and especially focusing on the children who have been killed in their thousands. And if you believed our mainstream media, you would think that these children don't have names. So we're going to do something now which remember them, remember them with their names. There are some people coming round now with some photos with the names on and some candles. And it would be great if some of you could hold those up or just look at them and reflect on the lives that have been lost. And while that's happening, we've got a couple of poems. A couple of young people are going to read out poems by two Palestinian authors. And then we will have a two minute silence. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Dania Malaka and I am a Palestinian from Gaza. I have family members who are living there, family members who have been killed and many of them who are children. And for these children, I want to say a poet by a Palestinian poetic. His name is Khalid Jumaa. So. School children of Gaza, you, oh, oh, oh. oh school children of Gaza, you who constantly disturbed me with your screams under my window. <coughs> test, test. Oh, yep. <laughs> I'm just gonna start. Yeah, yeah, Oh, her oh, school children of Gaza, you who have constantly disturbed me with your screams under my window. You who filled every morning with Russian chaos. You who broke my vase and stole the lonely flower on my balcony. Come back. Please come back and scream as you want and break all the vases. Steal all the flowers. Come back. Just come back. Thank you. Hello. Hello. All right. Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming. Um, my name is Anissa Saeed and I'm a student at the University of Kent. And I'll be reading a poem by Palestinian poet and author Zaina Azam. Write my name on my leg, mama. Use the black permanent marker with the ink that doesn't bleed. If it gets wet, the one that doesn't melt if it's exposed to heat. Write my name on my leg, mama. Make the lines thick and clear. Add your special flourishes so I can take comfort in seeing my mama's handwriting when I go to sleep. Write my name on my leg, mama. And on the legs of my sisters and brothers. And on the leg this way we will belong together. This way we will be known as your children. Write my name on my leg, Mama. And please write your name and Baba's, Baba's name on your legs too. So we will be remembered as a family. Write my name on my leg, Mama. Don't add any numbers like when I was born or the address of our home. I don't want the world to list me as a number. I have a name and I am not a number. 
Write my name on my leg, mama. When the bomb hits our house, when the walls crush our skulls and bones, our legs will tell our story, how there was nowhere for us to run. Thank you. So we're going to have a, a two minute silence now and to think of all these children and their names. Thank you. some songs um okay take it away um we'll sing a song um written in solidarity for palestine by um adrian marie brown so i'll sing it through and then please sing with me yeah we breathe together we breathe, we breathe together we breathe together stop the occupation we breathe together, we breathe together, we breathe together, stop the occupation. Again. We breathe together, we breathe together, we breathe together. Stop the occupation. We march, we march, we march together. We march, we march together. We march together. Stop the occupation. Again. We march together. We march together. We march together. Stop the occupation. We grieve, we grieve, we grieve together. We grieve together. We grieve together. Stop the occupation. We strike, we strike, we strike together. We strike together. 
we strive together. Stop the occupation, free Palestine, free Palestine, free Palestine, free Palestine. Stop the occupation again. Free Palestine, free Palestine, free Palestine. Stop the occupation, cease fire now, cease fire now, cease fire now, cease fire now. Stop the occupation again. Cease fire now, cease fire now, cease fire now. Stop the occupation again. Cease fire now, cease fire now, cease fire now. Stop the occupation, we breathe together, we breathe together. We breathe together, we breathe together. Stop the occupation, stop the occupation, repeat that. Stop the occupation, stop the occupation, stop the occupation, stop the occupation, stop the occupation. Thank you. Thank you, Amy, and thank everyone for joining in. Um, we're going to do one more, which is um, an arrangement of a song by a British rapper, activist, and very strong Palestinian ally, Loki. It's called We Will Rise. I'm going to actually divide the group in half and try and teach two part harmonies. So this side, you're going to start with me. We're going to go... Um, up for us today um, but I just wanted to say a few things before before we get to that point um, some of it reiterating what Samir said basically let us not go away from here today and forget what we have witnessed what we've been a part of building today we have broken the communal silence which has hung over Margate since the 7th of October. 
We must continue fighting to have our voice heard. We must stand together and take care of one another. You can join the Palestinian Solidarity Campaign and the BDS movement. You can follow your lo local branches on Facebook and Instagram. You can give your money or your time to support the cause. Attend events and take part in actions. But if you do nothing else, if you do none of those things, just keep this conversation alive in your homes, in your places of work, in your places of worship. Refuse to turn away from the suffering that we are witnessing. The next national march is in central London on Saturday the 25th of November, 12 noon. It would be great to see all of you there. Thank you all for coming today. Yeah. Thank you, Margate. I hope to see you all on the march. And free Palestine. 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 Are you ready, mate? Uh, listen, guys. Let's have a big hand for Mike Righteous. Wow. Honestly, I never thought I'd see the day I'd see some such an event like this take place in a place I grew up with and in a place like Margate. Um, I want to thank everybody for standing up for something that can be perceived as so controversial, um, for standing up against a topic that has been close to me for years and years. And I wanna thank everybody for coming out today and standing in solidarity with the people of Palestine and the children in Palestine. And if there's one thing that matters to me most, it's the generation that comes after us and if we don't lead the way and, sh and lead a good example and show the next generation how to live, how to be human, then how can we ever expect a healthy world for our own children to grow up in? Yeah. Yeah. These children look like my children. These Palestinian children are my children. I am Palestinian. You are Palestinian. And until there is a ceasefire, I will continue to scream free Palestine. I will continue to, to stand up for the things that I believe in. When I started making music, I wanted to be a famous rapper. <laughs> I wanted money and success. I wanted fame. I also wanted to stand up for what I believed in. I also wanted to use my platform for good. I also had morals. I believed in freedom of speech. And one day that all changed. I was allowed on the BBC to speak a freestyle. And during that piece, I mentioned the words Free Palestine. And it's no secret, them words were censored from my speech. That was 12 years ago. And since that day, my career and a lot of the reasons why I am where I am today and I didn't reach the heights that I dreamed of reaching when I was a child and the reason that I was blacklisted from multiple record labels but this was never about me and from the moment I really understood the industry I was in I washed my hands with it and I was a thank you. It's always been important to me. And this is a cause that has always been close to my heart. And yesterday, I was at a march. Today, we're in Margate at a rally 
On Saturday we was in London with millions of people. Yeah. One of the biggest marches. And it really does feel like, as sad as it is, that humans are really starting to wake up and feel and understand what it's like and really feel for the Palestinian people. I, as, 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 as hurtful and as heavy as my heart is, it's so beautiful to see people coming together, no matter the race, no matter the differences, and just being one, because we are all human. And wherever there is injustice anywhere, there is injustice everywhere. Um, I don't know how long we have here. We have to have a round of applause for the organizers. Thank you so much for having me here. It really does mean a lot. This is just the start for us guys. This is a movement and we really have to keep this momentum up. Until there is a ceasefire, until there is peace, until Palestine are granted their peace of their land that we are all deserved to as humans on this earth. We are floating on a rock in infinite space, moving from place to place. We are all one, we are all part of humanity. It is greed and it's the power of man that allow this level of destruction. But it's the love in our hearts that will bring everyone back together. It is the love in our hearts that will cause uh, the ceasefire. And um, I just want to say everyone should be very proud of themselves and never give up on this fight until the fight is over. However long that takes, please continue to post, continue to turn up to rallies, continue to do it peacefully with love in your hearts. And don't give these beasts a reason to condemn us no further. Be better. Be better. Shall we do some charging? Yeah. I'll leave you and I'll lead we have a chant before I go. One second, mate. Just, just before we do the chanting, we're gonna pass these uh, these collection buckets around. Yeah, uh, they're for medical aid for Palestine. So obviously, it's important um, to give as generously as you can today. Um, so there's gonna be those buckets going around. Just be great if you gave. Okay, thank you. Yeah, definitely. Pass the bucket round, guys. Whatever you can give. Once again, Margate, thank you so much. We need much more of this. And I'm sure, together, we will overcome. And we will do what we need to. And we'll stand up for the plight of these Palestinian people. No child deserves to be punished purely for being born. So, people, Free, 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 Thank you so much everybody, thank you so much.